All right. What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations, and I'm the host of Epic Conversations 2020, Best Podcast News Award winner, 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethic Media Association. I also co-host and co-produce the only online show in the world for dads and fathers. It's sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. And being part of that team in 2023, 2021, and tw I missed 2022. I missed that in the middle. <laughs> All right. <laughs> those three years, uh, we reach out directly and indirectly to over 100,000 fathers around the world. I'm also happy to be a content uh, supplier. I don't know what the word is. Content supplier. I guess a content supplier from the to the Fly Nubian Queen Network. So what is up, Fly Nubian Queen Network, that is driven by Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. As always, I like to say you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles and a solution for someone's problem. And uh, you know what? I'll go do this first. Please subscribe to the Dr. Vibe Show on YouTube and hit the notification button. Also follow the Dr. Vibe Show on Fa show, 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 Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. If you want to advertise your business product or service on any of the platforms that I am blessed to host, please feel free to email me at dr. period, v i b e at the dr, v i b e s h o w dot com. So it is prime time Saturday with Aisha K. Staggers. Laura La La Key, let me put myself in the bond because these ladies deserve to be on the top. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just a minion, man. I'm just, I'm, a, I'm an underling. What's going on, ladies? It's been a good week. It yeah, has. it's been an exhausting week. Exhausting. Yeah. How wrapped Somebody up are you? Somebody said the other day, well, we made it through the whole year of January. That's kind of how I felt, too. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. All right. And how is Black History Month treating you? Love it. I post something every day. And what I do love about that is that somebody always tells me that they didn't know that fact. So I've been doing this for about mm, five or six years where I post Black history every month, uh, every day of, of, of February. And of course, we get a leap year this year. And um, people really love it. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yes. Mm hmm well, that's always a good thing. I always, that makes me feel good when I've shared something that someone didn't know about. Yeah, I've been adding some Black History Facts to our Patreon. So every Sunday I've been going in and adding, oh. writing full stories about oh. some of these interesting facts and adding them oh. to our Patreon. So. Okay. okay. Yeah, I used to kind of cool like that. She just, like, <laughs> just sneaks in, right, and just goes on, under the radar and does stuff. Um. You know, we don't have it as a conversation topic, but I don't know if any of you either read or saw the conversation between Shannon Sharp again and Monique. No, it's been coming up on my um, YouTube feed. I just haven't had a chance to sit and watch anything on YouTube. Okay. Very... I listened to a little bit of it, but Monique has been been the sounding board for a very long time and people blew her off. But now they're starting to see she's not crazy. She's telling the truth. Mm -hmm. So, well, I, I, especially well, the stuff with Taraji about you know the interaction with Oprah and um, people saying that Oprah's trying to blackball Taraji because um, what the color purple yeah. didn't get the the numbers at the box office that Oprah wanted, and you know looking for someone to blame, blaming wow. Taraji. But you know. Musicals are typically like that, though. Yeah, and there were a lot of people who didn't even realize it was a musical, and then they were upset about it. <laughs> right. it wasn't a, it wasn't a remake of the nineteen eighty four okay. film. It's a remake of the stage play, which was a musical. Right. It, well, we'll chat offline. I'll, I'll, if anyone, if either of you get a chance, I'd love to have your thoughts about it via the the disco group. So before we go any further. Promo, 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 promo. So what you want to do, go to the Primetime store. There's the link there. I'll also be sharing out on all the platforms that people are watching this live. Putting up also, new merchandise this week. There you go. There you go. Bing, bing. Patreon. So you should tell people again what they can catch on the Patreon. On the Patreon, Lala and I do a 10 and 10 where we we will post generally post the 10 minutes, first 10 minutes of that conversation of our 10 story rundown. 
on the Discord, but we usually have about a full hour plus conversation on 10 topics that we don't get to cover um, during the show and things that um, we've noticed in addition to the topics that we cover that we want to talk about in more depth. And so there's those conversations. There's um, We're going to put some exclusive merchandise up there working on that. Um, and people can also, uh, Lala is going to start doing some blogs and things around um, financial um, capacity and exploration. And so when she mm. does, start adding those to that, to that to help mm. people get their finances straight in 2024. Um, yeah. This month, like I said, I've been posting um, some Black history um, stories. Just, you know, like I posted one recently about um, the man who, he was a West African former slave who was oh. the pioneer for vaccinations in the U.S. And wow. so, yeah. And so, and he brought that over from Ghana. So I wrote a whole um, just really doing whole like in-depth kind of story of the back, giving you a background, what it means and what the legacy of that is today. And so there's, I think there's like four or five up there so far. Um, and um, I'm going to start blogging on a few things book related, um, having some conversations with some black authors with books coming out. Um, yeah. And then doing some book giveaways. Actually, I have um, a few books that i um, are coming in to do giveaways on our Patreon. So if you sign up for the Patreon, if you subscribe, it's only, I think it's what, $7 a month to mm -hmm. join for the exclusive content. Um, you'll be able to access those interviews with those um, authors and sign up for the um, book giveaway. And you know, doing my, doing my own book giveaway for my oh own my. books. There you go. Going on. Um, I love it. We're busy. What? Well, no, we're positive productive. Yes. Thank you. I don't like yes. I don't like the busy. Busy is overrated to me. I like positive productive. You know yeah. what? I have a, actually a suggestion. I think with well, let me roll into the next thing. Our Discord group. I think we should do a special Discord group conversation with our Discord group people. And uh either ask or provide something of we well, actually we should reach out to the Discord group and ask them what would you like to chat with us in a private conversation about? And I, if anyone really wants to talk more um, about our music interests, so that's something that we've been talking uh, about trying to either do. either music interests or you know Lala has some stuff about you know finance and stuff, and we're all entrepreneurs. We can also share our journeys in regards to that. Yes. Um, I could offer That's some. important for people right now. You can't depend on these jobs, y'all. No. And, you can't. Mm -mm. and also thinking about maybe I can do a little short thing about sp getting sponsorships and giving some tips. I just saw a really, 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 my main mentor just did something on uh, ChatGPT. He has ChatGPT 4 Plus. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and basically, he got. He got, he, he uses it. He, the prompts are the key family using AI. Prompts are the key. Yeah. He basically got asked enough that chat GPT, the paid version, wrote him a whole course outline. Yep. And actually a uh, proposal and the whole thing. He kept on prompting. It was just, it's, it was just next level. Like <laughs> it was really, really good. So I think, you know, what's really interesting about that, I'm glad you said that, because I just created a course for realtors on how to use chat GPT. I did not realize how many realtors are scared to death of it. So I completed one and it was so nice to be able to share that information so that people can grow. Yeah, it's well, it's, a, it's an idea, idea generator. But when yeah. what, he, what he shared today, I was going, oh, like he got someone to put it there and an idea they have for a show and they said so who do you want to make the proposal to gave the company put in the prompt the right keys and they gave them a whole thing on how what to send via email to get their interests oh that's it that was, you know the technology was, person to me is doing this yeah <laughs> it was it was just <laughs> next level and uh i like, love it it was really really good i'm just going wow Wow, I'm I'm pushing to maybe get the paid version, but I I got to make sure it's a worth my investment to do it enough 
to just uh, to do it. Well, there. I do. I have the paid version. It's so for I. Okay, there you go. It so it is worth it. Jane Mayas is in the house, and she loves Patreon. Wonderful. Uh, we have Troso. Hi. Hi for first Hi. time. I'm the first. There you go. And Mama Pam. Hello, Mama Pam. All right, and bless and blessing. And blessing to you, Mama Pan. It's uh, been a week. <laughs> yeah, my name is Mama. Are you sure? Okay, I think Mama Pam is a little uh, bit of an interesting person. Well, we all got feet. We don't need to see yeah. yours. So I put. <laughs> my, yeah. So we're gonna just. Uh, the trolls will come. But yeah, the, the trolls here, are always out there. You know, you're doing something good when you have trolls. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's actually interesting, and I I don't know. Did I give you that gentleman's name who does YouTube stuff? Did I give that? that yes. Yes. He, well, he was on. He's. I think he's on every Saturday morning, nine a.m. Eastern time. He was on for three hours today, and he took about fifty questions. Wow. Um, so I'm, and so I'm really telling you, we're not going to give that gentleman's name out here, but he is really good. And you know what he did today? He actually did a live stream via YouTube. And YouTube Shorts at the same time. Oh wow! He could do that on Shorts. <laughs> That's why I gave you his name. <laughs> he did. He did his weekly thing oh, today. Was it, yeah. So obviously, with the YouTube Shorts, it just has a picture in because it's it's vertical screen. Right. But he did both at the same time. He had both going at the same time. Wow! Oh, Doctor Vab, Doctor Vab. Well, that's. <laughs> <laughs> That's why people gotta tap into Doctor Vibe every once in a while, because I like to keep keep on the on live on the edge. And he yeah he was on for three and a half hours, and he would people would put in questions, and he'd be asking them, asking them, asking, answering them, answering, answering, answering. It was wow. really good. It was really really good. Okay, from Colorado, JJ Mars, yes. And <laughs> Regina says, good evening, panel. Hi, Not a troll here. <laughs> but, you know, so the reason why I mentioned him is that he said one of the things he's noticing now is a lot of trolls on YouTube shorts. Mm. Yes. Yes. Seems to be a lot of trolls uh, taking base on YouTube shorts. So YouTube, get it together. <laughs> get oh. it together. Get it together. Right, so oh. I want to. Oh, I said that. All right, so we have a lot. So just family. So usually, usually by Friday, my Saturday morning, we decide on topics. And you know what happens every Saturday morning? We got too many things to chat about. So it's just like we got to. Uh, no, yes. Everything no, that could possibly happen this week. <laughs> you know. So we have our digital cutting room. <laughs> so think about <laughs> film production and what are we going to cut out of the final product. But believe me, there was a lot of things that we had to hold pat. Oh, question for both ladies and also for people who are watching live on the replay. Next week, we have Manifa Books coming on talking about digital privacy. Love it. So yes. um, I want to make sure both ladies are available. I'm going to start promoting it from like Monday, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. you know? So everyone who's watching on whatever platform, if you have questions about digital privacy, next week and not i don't think too many times we dedicate a whole prime time to one subject yeah yeah because so, lala and i are going to catch up the other topics on our 10 and 10 so it's a reason yes. to yeah. join the patreon yes to cover yes. the week's topics but digital privacy we're going to be and uh, as i said manifa so important brooks, yeah did manifa brooks says yeah i think most of us have digital yeah. counter encounters. And as I said, she has over 15 years experience in the data privacy, or if you're in England, wow. privacy, privacy industry and her and her um, partner, they, another lady, they do data privacy with companies in Canada, U S and Europe. Really? Wow. Yeah. I really am. As much <laughs> so as we do digitally, I, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, so it's going to be really exciting. So that's a programming alert. And I just wanted to confirm with the ladies live round. They'll be available. And by Monday or Tuesday on all the platforms, you'll see that this is promoted out there. And uh, that's that. And thank you, ladies. Lala's broadcasting this on her Facebook page. And Aisha's doing this on her X page. So we got everything going on. Who else is coming out? 
Jen Meyer says, looking forward to it. Yeah, load up your questions about di 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 digital privacy, et cetera, et cetera. She, like I said, <laughs> she told, so you have C, is it C-SPAN in the US? Mm -hmm. So we have our parliamentary channel here. And she says, yeah, she spends many a day just listening to what's going on hearings wise in the Kenyan government. Yeah, because you don't get the, um, they, they've been trying to do some of those privacy hearings and you don't get that on the regular news or no. the Kenyan news. So you no. have to watch C-SPAN. Yeah. It can be very boring because they all talk like like it's like watching the golf channel of politics. He's trying to make you go to sleep. <laughs> you know, you, you know, here's a little ad. When my daughter was um little, like about a year and a half, I was struggling to get her to go to sleep. And my sister, my youngest sister, was like, Hell, you should have her watch C SPAN, it'll make her go to sleep, right? Shame. And I I started putting on C SPAN and she would be knocked out immediately. Then by the time she was about two, two and a half. She wasn't going to sleep. She was paying attention to, to what was going on on C-SPAN and telling me about it. Wow. <laughs> and, that's how, that's so how getting, and that's how she started getting into politics was because she started paying attention to what was going on on C-SPAN. Wow. That's funny. And she'd be like, mommy, because this was like back in the like early 2000s. Mommy, did you know that Barbara Boxer said just, I'm like, huh? <laughs> Oh my! Wow! All right, let's uh, done our appetizer. Let's start getting to the main course. First up, appeals court says forty five doesn't have a presidential immunity, and I can't pronounce it. Angoran, Angoran, Angor, Angoran finds forty five attorneys may have known a witness perjured himself in a fraud case. So another week of forty five highlights. Where you want to start, ladies? Well, well where's not to start? Go ahead, Aisha. Well, <laughs> well you know. I paid attention to, I watched all these things this week. So that's why it was such a busy week. I watched the, um, well, I listened to, because they don't have cameras in, but I listened to the, um, the um, what they said about the appeals court decision and paid attention to it. And, and basically there, I read parts of it and um, people kept speculating it was going to be like two and 300 pages. It was like 50 some, about, 50 some odd pages, pretty tight decision, unanimous decision that he doesn't have presidential immunity. And the things that they cited were his own lawyers from hmm. the impeachment hearings and what they said about, um, you know, if they don't impeach him, that the courts could take care of it. They cited Mitch McConnell saying that the courts could take care of it. So these three women, um, they came up with a really, really tight decision. It's it, it's so tight, and they and they really focused on the aspect of um, not, for example, impeachment is not a is not a criminal case. It is civil. And so this is a criminal case. And Trump's attorney brought up the idea that, oh, well, you know, if presidents don't have um, presidential immunity, then they'll be afraid to do their job fully. And they really made a very clear distinction of what is in the president's um, purview as, as his job and what uh -huh. isn't. And they determined that this whole election this election part, the uh, you know, elections are not part of the president's job. That is the essential reason as to why they came down to this part of presidential immunity. And so, it's you know, they and they gave him what, five days. They said you have till Monday <laughs> to um, file your appeal with with SCOTUS. Otherwise, it's going to stand and kick it back to um, Judge Chuck in D.C. So it's. Um, it is that is going to be a very uh, close thing to watch Supreme Court do. I have a feeling that they won't even take it, given how they were reluctant on this SCOTUS hearing that they had this week. That I heard, and I I um, text Lala and asked her if she was listening. She started listening, and that one it appears that they are going to. Um, they are going to rule in favor of Trump, not Colorado, for kicking him off the ballot. The questions that kept coming up with the um, both the Republican appointed um, justices, but as well as the liberal ones, was that should one state be able to decide for all the states how the election will, uh, well, decide the presidential election for all the states. Problem I had oh. with that was that, um, but you all 
decided to let one state, Mississippi, decide for all the country whether or not abortion will be legal. You're about to do that with Texas with the Mifeprestone um, decision on um, on birth control and, and, yeah. um, the, and medical abortions. You also let one state decide, and mind you, what three or four of the justices up there were working on the 2000 um, election on behalf of Bush. They were attorneys for that. Mm -hmm. They decide <laughs> that one state could decide the election for the country when it came to Florida in the tw in the 2000 election. So I don't know how that's going to how that's going to um land with the country if they if they should decide if they should decide this in this way but um yeah so those are the two courts on that and then Engeron found well Trump's attorneys because they know he's supposed to come up with this decision on how much he's going to owe um the state of New York um his attorneys worded a really unfriendly letter to Engeron about his ethics and things and he uh and asked him to reopen the case. He said he would not. And then he had questions. And one of the questions was, um, now that um, what's Weisselberg is having a, um, he's um, negotiating a plea deal on perjury, on his, on his perjury, he's wanting to know, hey, did you guys know about this? Did you know that he perjured himself? And if so, how come you didn't give me a heads up? You know, all this other stuff that you're doing, it's getting old. How about you answer my question now? <laughs> I just enjoyed it with popcorn. <laughs> because but, but you, when Aisha ahead. told me, it was like, it, it, when you tune in and you really listen to this, guys, it really is a joke. Now, one thing that we did giggle about is that we um, we actually agreed with CT on a couple of things. Yeah, Clarence Thomas, I did agree. You know what? I, I caught it at the very beginning and the Trump attorney made his case. You know, they had each have 40 minutes to speak. So Trump's attorney did his little thing. And like within three minutes said, said what he had to say and then said, now I'll take questions. And Clarence Thomas his first thing was like, um, you know, you didn't take very long to make your case and you didn't make a, he basically said you didn't make a case here at all at all. And so it really left for the justices to have to ask questions to really draw out what the case was. And it kind of felt, it kind of felt like they were hoping to do this so they don't have to make that decision. Right. But because remember, there are other states that are trying to kick Trump off the ballot. And I think that they want to make this one decision on the 14th Amendment um, and Section 3 of the 14th Amendment on insurrection. And they don't have to deal with the actual insurrection, whether or not Trump um, did, um, you know, was an insurrectionist. If he did right. this insurrection, they didn't want to rule on that. They want to rule on the ballot issue, whether or not they could kick him off the ballot. And that was the question, the line of questioning they asked him. And his, and, you know, his attorney was basically like, yeah, you know, the argument, insurrection is part of the argument, but that's not the stronger argument. The stronger argument is, should this state be able to decide? Right. And right. it was just, and I agreed with I agreed with Clarence Thomas on that. He was just like, you didn't really make your case. I was actually kind of surprised at that, though. I wonder if Trump is trying to really, really uh, is assuming that, you know, he's got their support um, and that maybe that's why they didn't prepare as much. It's really interesting to me how they just assume that they have everything in order and that everybody is going to support them when we all know that critical eyes are on this whole Supreme Justice. Thing. Well, you know, the interesting part of it too is that Colorado is not a state that he won in right. 2020 or 2016. Right. Why are you fighting this particular one? Because you're not going to win this state either. So why are you fighting this? And the plaintiffs were all Republicans. The plaintiffs, the people who did, who filed the case in Colorado to get him kicked off the ballot. One of them is a 91-year-old woman who's been a Republican her whole life, 
worked, served in the Colorado State Senate and House of Representatives, okay? And these are all Republicans who are saying, we don't want him on the ballot. It's like, why nope. are you fighting this one when, you know, he's not fighting Maine because Ma Maine is making that decision. Michigan right. is making that decision. I don't understand why this particular one was the one that he chose to, um, the hill he's choosing it to- It seems uh, strange. It seems strange. All right. So Regina is saying, great job pointing out legal decision inconsistencies, inconsistencies, Aisha. I have, I have a question for both of you, and it came up in my alleged mind over the last few weeks. With, okay, actually, let me, she also has 45 is guilty of sedition. His followers on July, uh, probably saying January 6th, not July 6th, are guilty of insurrection. Two sides of the same dang coin. One side plans it, incites it. The other side acts mm -hmm. it out. But see, mm -hmm. that was the that was the argument that um, Colorado made in their case was that he that insurrection doesn't necessarily mean in doesn't mean the physical act inciting can be considered insurrection under that um, clause of the 14th Amendment. So getting back to my alleged thoughts, at the end of the day, with 45 having his justices on the court, Supreme Court, isn't anything that doesn't go his way, isn't he just going to appeal it, appeal it, and they're just going to... You can't appeal it past the Supreme Court. No, but that I just mean, it. but what I'm saying is for other things, he's going to take it to the Supreme Court and with his liens or his, people that he appointed, don't you think naturally they're just going to favor him? Well, isn't, that know, his, isn't that his game plan? But see, I point to Neil Katyal in this because Neil Katyal, he's been on um, a lot of, uh, he's done a lot of commentary, but he's he's done 50 cases before the justices. Um, what he's And he also wrote the rule on um, whether or not to um, presidents can be charged. Um, hmm. And the thing that he said is that they're, they're going to take this case because this case can affect all of the elections. The other cases, it's likely that they won't take them. And that is why um, I think the judge. Well, why is that? Why is that, Aisha? Why, why they won't take them? One time, they are aware of the political calendar. Um, the other part is that some of these criminal cases, they don't take, they don't usually take these criminal cases like this. And remember, a lot of the things that they make decisions on are based on civil, are civil cases, based on civil acts that go against the Constitution, not criminal law. Mm. And he and he is embedded in all of these criminal cases. <laughs> and I don't stop losing count as many as are coming up. Okay, ninety-one counts, four cases. I mean, the thing that he might try to appeal is the um, case in New York with the fraud. But even then, they can't, they will probably step out of that one too because they cannot remember the tax issues and, and how you how you register businesses and, and file all your paperwork. That is a state part. And that was the question too that came up with SCOTUS was that the differentiation between what is a federal election, general election for federal office versus state offices and they got he, trump's lawyer tried to do this tricky thing on whether or not the president was an officer of the united states versus the office of the president being in office and why he wasn't um he was excluded for that and judge sotomayor made this point that i just thought was it was like nail on the head. It was like, it seems like you're gerrymandering this issue so that it benefits your client because traditionally yes. all of the other people who've been presidents have held some office or have been officers where they have sworn the oath that you're saying your client didn't. So basically what you're saying is that he, he falls through this loophole because he wasn't a sworn officer. Because remember, too, the other part is that you have these other offices and officers who are in the line of secession, who also mm -hmm. all took the other oaths. And if he is not in the line of, if, if he basically wanted them to say that the president is not in this line of secession and doesn't, yes. it doesn't hold the same kind of meaning. But if the president is going to be, if the president is not an officer of the United States, then why do we have a president? Exactly. 
Why don't we just have a speaker of the house and that person, because that person is an officer of the country be, be who we elect. All right. So some, so Regina says the Supreme court does not have to take the case. And she also says word games. The president is the chief officer SMH and then JG Mars, who is a resident of Colorado, says Colorado is considered to be a purple state, but is really red in many counties. Yes, it is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he never. But he didn't win. He didn't win the state in either race that he was already in. Which that's the part to me that doesn't seem um, right. Why I could. I, I could see him probably doing this if South Carolina had decided to do that because he won South Carolina both times. But this is a state you haven't you haven't won in in either in either race, um, and it doesn't look like you're going to this uh-huh. go around. Why are you fighting being on that ballot? But you know what? I say let him be on the ballot. Let people reject him a third time in Colorado. I mean, how, it's, it's, it's the shot to the ego that he needs. Let them reject him a third time. It's like, okay, fine. You don't want the embarrassment that Nikki Haley just had this week when when no one on this ballot won <laughs> over Nikki Haley. Okay, fine. All right. So Fit and IQ Cam, evening, folks. Good to see you. KSF EYL RWFQ is in the house. I just think that, and I think, uh, well, I think that I think that forty five knows the long game. He knows yeah. the long game. Like I think right now, his immediate thing is not to get any serious convictions or trials while he's running f- during the uh, election run that's upcoming later on this year. He's just but trying Trump to get. He's picking off people. He's going to still have more problems. I don't think the justices were very pleased with this whole thing at all. No, and the other thing too you have to remember is that elections cost money, so he can keep running. He can keep running back and forth to court to delay, 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 but delay also incurs expense, okay? So you think about these other two cases that he has where he's got to pay out a hefty amount of money. He's going to be, he's definitely, he's already pulling from his campaign funds to pay for legal legal cases. He's going to have to pull from more of that, which means he will have less money on hand to spend yes. it, to spend on the election things like advertising and things like that. And in the meantime, Joe Biden doesn't have any of those expenses. So, you know, and, and he's raised more money than Trump the last quarter. So he can spend all of his money on the actual campaign. Not only that, but remember, the longer this primary, this Republican primary lasts, he's got the expenses he's taking from his campaign to pay for his legal fees. And then he's got the expenses he's taking to um, campaign against Nikki Haley. Okay, and so the longer she stays, the more yeah, he's going to yeah, get. Yeah, but but it, it seems that his war uh, his war chest continues to get bigger and bigger because a lot of his supporters seem to fund fund him by any means necessary. Yeah, but remember, he's got to pay those. Um, and and I did check last time we talked about this. Lala said it was twenty percent. Actually, in New York, it's actually a hundred percent. He's got to pay for the yes. He's got to pay all of it. To, to do the appeal. I was looking at that. I was like, oh, I was like, wow, 20%. And I was reading, I was like, no, he's got to pay all of it. Oh, wow. And that's why they, that's why they've been saying it's a, um, it is a financial um, death penalty for him. Wow. So he's, he's got to pay that. His, his, his supporters will keep giving him money, but then he's got to decide where it's But that's got to run dry at some point. Exactly. He's got to decide where that money is going to go. Or is it going to go towards paying these things so that you can appeal? Or is it going to go toward you trying to win? And it doesn't matter. Even if he won, he'd still have to pay those judgments because state case and the E.G. and Carroll case, it has... It's been decided already. You can't. He can't walk that back. Hmm. I know he's going to find a way to. But it's also not. Back. A, it's also not a federal case, either. Right. Remember, remember it, it was a sex, it was a sexual assault civil case. So there's not anything that he can really do on the on those fronts. I if just. He, he'll find way, a way. He'll find if a he way. Interferes, if he interferes with New York in that payment that way. Um, we'll find a way. It's gonna it's it's gonna cause a constitutional crisis where this where is there not one already? 
<laughs> well, no, not not like this because that is an issue of states' rights and states' governance and states' businesses. And uh -huh. the business community will turn their backs on him in that respect because at that point, and there's the and there's the complaint. If he rolls, if he tries anything to roll that back and to say that individual states can't determine how business practices are done, you have businesses and that go to different states because of how the business practices are. And these are the people who are friendly to him now. They will be yes. so, they will be so yeah. at that At point. some point, it's all gonna start backfiring on him. He can keep on with this if he like, but honestly, at a point even, I mean, cause he don't have very many rich people supporting him. You have to think the people who are supporting him are the $5. Well, they're, all Nikki, they're all at Nikki Haley, the, all the rich there people. There you go. See what I'm saying? That he's starting to lose some of this allegiance. Uh, I, you know what, I, 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 all the people that are rich that we believe are rich now that support him are losing a lot of money. Yes, they are. Look at Elon Musk. <laughs> losing a lot of money. Look at the My Pillow guy. Oh, he lost all of his money. Rudy Julian. All of, they're all losing all their money. Uh, the Koch brothers are losing massive amounts of money. Fox News, remember, they still have a two billion dollar lawsuit where they just did some hearings a couple of weeks ago. So all of you know, all the all the big money things behind him are losing money. He and they're going to they're going to wake up at some point and be like, it's either him or it's our financial security. Right. And they're not that invested in him the way that the people on the ground are. The people who support him that are wealthy are supporting him because of the tax cuts, not yes. because of the cultural issues. The people yes. who are giving him five dollars and ten dollars, their their issue are the their issues are the cultural issues because they don't have the money. We'll see. All I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not saying I'm just saying, I'm not saying I'm just saying, because I just think he always seems to find, find money. Here we go. Um, Regina says, I suspect the Lincoln project Republicans are funding Nikki Haley. I don't, they hate her. <laughs> okay. That's quick. No, <laughs> and, and I, and I, and, and I just, I just say this knowing the background of a lot of them and how they felt about her when she was governor. Hmm. They don't see, see I didn't any, know I didn't see that connection. They don't see any daylight between her policies and Trump's policies. The only thing that's different is her face. So is Nikki Haley's days numbered in running? Like after South no. Carolina if what I'm hearing. No, she's gonna that... she's gonna go to Super Tuesday. She said it, she's gonna do it. You know why? Because she's trying to get name recognition for 2028. Nikki Haley's not running for 2024. Make no mistake, Nikki Haley's running for 2028. Nikki Haley doesn't Got run. a strategy. She has a strategy. She's Nikki Haley has had this strategy since um, I've known about the strategy since 2006. Okay. So she's playing. She's playing a long game too. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the GOP in the U.S. And there seems to be a little bit, a little bit of friction. <laughs> In the, Senate, in the Senate GOP, <laughs> Ted Cruz isn't Mitch McConnell's only problem. Talk to us, ladies. No, it's not just Ted. There's there's Rand, all those people, even his own state is starting to turn against him. Mitch has, I, after a while, there's no honor uh, among thieves. Um, they see that he is weak. I'm sure that the fact that he sees the Grim Reaper very often has shown that he is weakened in his state. And when that happens, that's when the piranhas come. And that is exactly what's happening. Um, Everything that he has supported, because he was behind a lot of the stuff that went on this week. And when it failed, they see that as complete failure, like he is losing his upper hand. So they are now coming for him. And it's going to be very interesting to see how fast they tear him apart. And I don't think that's going to be very long. And I think he's going to end up being forced out. Yeah, I don't think that he's going to run again, um, both because of this and because of health issues. But Mitch McConnell, you have to remember when it came to this immigration thing, Mitch McConnell was going to work with Joe Biden on this. Mitch McConnell assigned Lankford, the most conservative of the conservatives in the Senate, yes. to do this immigration deal. He was supportive of it. He was talking about, yes, we got to get this done. This is a win for us until Donald Trump said. I don't want you to do it because I need something to run on the seat when the when the um, quiet part was said out loud and uh -huh. the house decided what they were going to do. 
Um, and not even having read the bill, the House decided, oh, it's a bad bill. And the, the more that they the more that they were against it and Trump kept saying that he was against it, he was against it and this whole thing because remember the other thing that scared them is what he said what he said about anyone who supports Nikki Haley you're kicked out you are no longer it and then there was a thing about him um forcing Rana Mc, Mc, Rana whatever Rona whatever her name is Mitt Romney's niece to step down from leading the RNC because I mean, just because she was willing to sit and talk with all of the can it was just weird. But when he started it, doing it that, was nuts. right, when he started, when people started um, looking at replacing Mike Johnson, replacing Rona McDaniel, and now Mitch McConnell sees himself as, oh my God, they're going to replace me too. He stepped away from it and then started saying, no, this deal is dead. It's dead. It's dead. It's dead. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that they weren't, and I think the thing that they were expecting Expecting, and, and this tells you that there is no coordination between the House and the Senate because I think Mitch McConnell is still operating as if John Boehner is still in the House. Yes, the House. Yes, because the the cooperation would have been if he were to say, "Okay, yeah, we're not going to do it because the House has the votes to um, impeach Mayorkas." There would be no reason for us to do that. Um, then we could have we could have best of both worlds. We have the impeachment of Mayorkas, you know, on this immigration issue, and then we can have the immigration issue to run on. Um, Mike Johnson didn't have the votes, and so there was that embarrassment. And mm -hmm. then, and then um, Mitch McConnell, he's sitting there now. He's like, "Oh wow, I'm like totally embarrassed because the House didn't do what they said that they could do." That's right. And now I went gung ho on this because I was really trying to support the house um through the Senate and, and now you know everybody's talking Ted's Ted Cruz is against him because he put Lankford up to do this thing. Lankford's now at him because he um he basically it fed him to the dogs. Yes it did. And it, and he's not used to being made look bad. This is this is not sitting well with him. At all. You can you know darn well he is losing serious sleep over this because he has been in such an iron fist position for so long that now his foundation is shook. You know he's not he's not doing well. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. And the fact that Cameron lost to mm -hmm. Kentucky, uh no. He's he, and and now people in his own state are turning against him. This yeah. is serious. As a matter of fact, they said uh, in Kentucky that they really feel like that if Bashir decided to run for for the House or the Senate, he would win. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Mitch McConnell has come to the realization, I think some of the older and longer holding, you know, seat holders in both the House and the Senate is like, wow, there really is no um compromise or or leadership for us and this really this party really doesn't have any more establishment republicans in it because even the establishment republicans have joined the maga cult yes I mean, you could, people used to consider stinky elise stefanik as an establishment republican all you have to do is look at her transformation in the last two months look at a picture of her from august of 2023 to just yesterday. And it is clear that this woman has, she sold her soul yes. in the hopes that she's going to be vice president or yes. vice presidential nominee. And it's it actually you, scary. It is scary. They all have price tags on their foreheads. And, the and you can just see power. the greed written all over them. They're just going to go with whatever they can to get the power that they want. And in the meantime, and I'm going to keep saying this because I want y'all to understand all this drama that is going on up there, nothing is getting done for you or me as Americans. We're getting nothing done. We have no budget. Everybody's in disarray. Everybody's saying they need to go home and take a vacation. Everybody's fighting and imploding and no business of the United States is being done. And we are being seen as weak by the whole world. This is a very dangerous position. Oh yeah, they just went back in January and they're about to go on a two week vacation starting starting what, Monday? 
Yeah. <laughs> Starting Monday. And they, they've, uh, they've done nothing. Guess what? They haven't even named a post office. No. Okay. That is something else that the house is supposed to do. They haven't even done that. So, you know, and, and there's tons and tons of bills. Put it this way. They've been spending all their time on this impeachment of Mayorkas and they're now about to bring back the impeachment of, of um, Biden stuff because they've got more Hunter Biden stuff to look into. And it's like, wait a second. Don't you all have a budget to discuss? Because in two weeks, two and a half weeks, yep. was it March 3rd or 4th, yeah. right before yeah. the midterm, you all are supposed to come up and fund the budget. And I personally think that they don't want to do that before the March 7th or March 5th, I think it is, um, um, uh, Super Tuesday, because they need it to run on. Remember, they're all engaged yes. in primaries, too. And that's the other part of it, too, is that you all are running for office right now in the House. You're All the seats are up. You're all running. And you have done absolutely nothing. nothing. I, I mean, I'm really angry over it. I've had to calm myself down about it because the more and more of these stories that we were talking about this week come out, the more and more I'm like, what is being done? What is going on? What is what protections are we being abided by? What is going what's going to be funded? You know, this is just is not acceptable, period. And at this point, all of them need to go. No, it, it's like our government right now is paralyzed and they keep saying, well, Joe Biden can do this through executive order. He's done everything that he could possibly do. They, that's their fallback order. on everything. There's nothing else that he can do. I mean, here you guys are. You're basically saying, you know, we're going to impeach Mayorkas for not doing his job. But we didn't give him the resources to do his job. That and we're part. complaining that he didn't do his job because... You know, we don't want you to look at the the thing about us not giving him the money. Just look at the fact exactly. that he did the job. So, and, and you know, he went. They said that the numbers of people um, actually crossing on a daily basis have gone down because Mayorkas did go and make some negotiations with the president in Mexico to yes. um, to slow down the traffic of of people leaving Mexico to come. And, but and they don't want to talk about that. Don't they don't want to, you know, they don't want to talk about that at all. So Mitch McConnell is not the only one that has a problem in the Senate. He's not the only one that has a problem in the House, because I promise you, and look, Mike Johnson, the only reason that he he went on this tirade these last two weeks is because Matt Gates, who they brought the, um, they're starting to look into him again. Said that he, <laughs> he's willing to um, um, to um, file that order to uh, have them expel him, expel Mike Johnson. So let me ask then: Where is forty five the puppet master in all this? Yes, I'm trying to figure yeah, out how to this man, who is a private citizen, he's not ele any kind of elected official. How is he telling? Our elected officials how to govern right now dude you're running run your campaign how about you worry about that how about you worry how about, you worry about money? these cases you got exactly you got 91 felony counts and here you are worried about the business of congress it, it was you, look, you had some he wasn't even worried about, about the business of congress when he was in office exactly. he was worried about what he could do exactly if you have something to run on run on it Otherwise, stop fabricating stuff because you're pissing the American people off. Well, it's interesting because I was listening to some commentary because the that the immigration compromise didn't go through, mm -hmm. and they interviewed someone like a average everyday citizen saying, and she was saying, "How does someone who's not involved with government have so much power in government?" Well, it's not new. Lots of comp corporations, but they, she was really at wit's end saying, like, how does this happen? And yeah, the, people are getting, they're getting fed up with this. This story is getting old. Yeah. And, and it's only going to, look, it's only going to take so long before people start to get tired of it. The one thing that Donald Trump is relying on is his name recognition and all this other stuff, whatever. But there is, the one thing that he, he forgets in this whole marketing thing and we all know this. We know this about our favorite artists, music, musical artists. There is a such thing as oversaturation. Yes. 
and and people will get tired of seeing your face on the news every night acting along acting with your cool. cases underneath exactly. that. Exactly. They're, they're gonna get tired of it. And so what he needs to be worried about is the backlash that will come in July when people are really, really when people when the re regular voters you know, we, we all pay attention to this stuff, but your regular average American that goes to work every day, they come home, they don't turn, they might turn on their local news, they might not, they're not watching right. cable news, but they do show up to vote. At some, by July is when those ads are going to start running on a constant yes. loop. And, and the phone and, calls or, and the emails and the, ugh. They're going to start getting sick of hearing about the court case thing. They're going to, it's going to be like, oh my God, I'm so sick of this. We need, we need to not, we need to be done with this because let's be very clear. And let's remember 2020, one of the things that helped Joe Biden was that people were sick of the Trump drama yeah. and the drama hasn't stopped. It's gotten no. worse, but for the majority of people who will vote, they haven't been able to see all that drama the way that we do watching, you know, right. news and our sources. But by July, after when, right when they get up to the, when they get close to the, um, the conventions, is when it's going to really start hitting people back, 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 back to back to back to back. They're going to get sick of it, and they're going to be, like, oh my god, this drama, this drama. Yeah. And the thing that's going to really put a lot of people off who who will vote and who may be on the fence or who may not be enthusiastic is. This rich man is getting away with what? Mm -hmm. And I can't. And while we're, I can't even I feed can't, my family. I can't feed yeah. my family, but n nonetheless, you know, I can't jaywalk and not get a ticket. And he's getting, he wants to get away with what? So yes. that, that's the thing that I have a feeling, because guess what? We're on an eight year now loop of Donald Trump's nonsense. Oh my God. Did you say that long? People are getting tired. I was tired before it started. I was too, but, but, you know, it takes a little while for people who aren't as in tune to the everyday ongoings and things. They're not paying attention exactly. to this way. They're not paying attention to what went on in Colorado or what's going on in the Supreme Court on this. They're not paying attention to that. They're not paying attention to the E. Jean Carroll thing. They're not paying attention to the fraud thing. The one thing that they are going to pay attention to is, hey, I need something from my government. My state government is not doing this but because they don't have money from the federal government. They don't have money from the federal government because... The federal government people are doing what? Because Donald Trump said what? And so, yeah. I, so I'm not getting this. What our schools aren't being funded properly? We're not getting yeah. what? You know, it, it's it's like, and remember, on the on the ground level, they're not. They aren't pulling people who are on the ground level. I want to know how the people feel. The parents whose kids got their um, school breakfasts, yes, school breakfast programs cut because. Um, Congress wanted to cut that. Yes. I want to know how and they you know what we don't always hear. There's always we we hear the worst of the worst. We really do all the time because they seem to find the ones who are willing to talk about it. But we have to also under understand that even though Trump has a lot of people that don't speak out, um, there are a lot of people who have common sense that don't speak out either because they just don't talk about politics, but they quietly vote and they still raise their voices in the voting way of yeah. how tired they are of them. And it's going to be the people who, like you said, quietly vote who are going to make the difference. Right now, politics is so um, explosive. Ridiculous. People don't want to talk about it because if, even if you say something, um, if you say- it's division. I, right, it, there's the, not just the division, people are coming after you, threatening to kill you and your family. Yes. They are stalking you. They're, they're sending bombs to people's houses. Yes. They're swatting people's houses. It's unsafe to even say, hey, I don't like this guy. Right. You're not allowed to, to differ. You can't be different from anybody else. You have to. They want you to agree with them on everything. Otherwise, you know, you're wrong and you're a danger. As it is there. And, and here's the thing that we're not seeing, too. And I wish that um, more mainstream media would show it. We talked last time about all the trucks going to the border. Yes. People. They're fighting each other. MAGA yes, they are fighting MAGA folks at the border. Why? Because they're they've gotten there and they're upset that it's not the way that, that they told them it was. Been holding, telling them that it was. They're like, where are all the people? And so they're getting antsy. They're frustrated about 
coming there and taking all and this even time getting on social that's media and talking yeah. about it. Now, see, yeah. that's a big that's a big thing. They can do, go down there and keep things to themselves, but when they get on social media and they start crying and whining and about this, to. nothing like what we told. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. When they start saying that, you've seen people flip. People are paying attention to that. I saw this woman for three minutes crying about yep. infighting, the MAGA infighting, saying, none of these these people aren't our friends. They say that they think the way that we do, and they don't. And I mean, they are getting there. Because he was what? butt hurt. The only people that are down there are them. There's no yes. there's not people protesting them being down there. They're protesting each other. They're fighting each other. And it's like, you know, I saw a fight break out and I'm like, really? And, and so it, what, what is it saying that um, I love from the Temptations, the Temptations movie that the character David Ruffin says to Eddie Kendrick, a shark, a shark will eat its own guts. And that's yeah. what we're seeing. So would you say then, uh, the GOP is challenging. There's the cha Are you saying then also some of the supporters of the GOP are internally are challenged with each other? Oh, oh, well, yeah. There's, there's levels to it. You know, there's levels to it. There's there's what you see the chaos in the government, the, the high profile people, but underneath the surface at the bottom level, I promise you, those people that went to the border, this they said there was something like there was something like twenty thousand of them supposed yes. to show up mm -hmm. over. A period of time, mm -hmm. they go back to their community. They're going to go back to their communities, okay? And they're going to talk about the things that happened. And this is going to circulate around the GOP. And once you have the people who are on the fringes be really upset with other people on the fringes they're supposed to be united with, that's when you start to see the bow break. And Trump cannot control that. No. Because guess what? If he could control it, um, January 6th would have been an organized riot. Not exactly. Not what we saw. All right. So we are going to take a quick little break. Uh, it has been quite a lively first part of the conversation, and it's only going to get more lively. So hang tight. 90 seconds. We'll be right back on primetime Saturdays on many different platforms. <laughs> you know, and and that's what I feel like. You feel like you're the Harry Tubman of the mind. I am. I feel like I'm the Harry. I, I I'm one of the Harry Tubmans of intelligent black people. Like I want to liberate y'all from like being left behind and ignored <laughs> and and you know, oblivious. Now, really, the rappers yeah. get all the attention. You know, seriously, does anybody else feel this way? Like like ignorant black people, they'll be all up. You know, getting all the headlines on the shade room. Overly and, sexualized black oh, folks. Over, like the, the the twerkers and the. You know, just just people that you know don't always represent the best of us. You know, the diversity. You know, like people like Doctor Vibe. Like everybody should know about people like Doctor Vibe. Doctor really Vibe should. is he's trying to do good work for for black people. Doctor Vibe from Toronto. Good to see you, my brother. Uh, Doctor Vibe. Everybody follow Doctor Vibe. He has a great show. He's very good at what he does, and I have a lot of respect for him. Okay, so let me um hop into this. What's up, Doctor Vibe? How you doing, everybody? If you see Doctor Vibe in the chat, everybody go follow the Doctor Vibe show. Dr. Bob is a real smart brother and a, a, a good human being. I like the guy a lot, and, and he's very intelligent, and uh, I think everyone should pay attention to what he's got going on. We got to shine the spotlight on the intelligent black people out here that are really doing the good work. Uh, don't just pay attention to the rappers and the celebrities. You know, a lot of these people are losers. Your true winners are your people in your community that are really having your back. Uh, you know, helping us to have stronger families and a stronger community. So Dr. Bob is in that category. So you might see the Dr. Bob show in this chat. If you see him, please go follow him. Okay. All right. So anyway. All right. Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. And it was interesting. Uh, Dr. Boyce, <laughs> they, they're actually in Las Vegas, not to watch ah. the Super Bowl, but uh, Dr. Alicia has she's been asked to either present at a conference or being interviewed out in Las Vegas. But the thing is, he lost his wallet yesterday. <laughs> no. and, and, and and the thing is, they were getting ready to go for their flight, couldn't find his wallet. Ended up they ended up missing their flight. And I think yeah. they took they Good took idea. another one. They took another one after, but they had to. They usually they had to do uh, sit. The other pe regular people, they didn't do first class this time, and they were scrunched up and all that. And he said when they got to the airport, so he still doesn't have his wallet. I don't think he's found his wallet yet, right? So he's in the airport, and he says, you know, I got my phone here. It's got, you know, there's no cover on it. And 
there's a gen- I can't remember the gentleman's name, but this he said there's a gentleman who's a block lawyer. I think he's from Oklahoma who works with Benjamin Crump, who oh. Doctor Boyce knows. And this guy's pretty big size. Used to play football, so Boyce has his phone up in the like this. This guy hugs him. Fun phone goes up in the air, <sighs> hits the ground. <laughs> Gone the green screen of death. Now he has no wallet and no phone. Well, he got a phone. He got a phone. He, he, got, he got a phone, but just crazy last 24 hours in him and Dr. Alicia's life. So, Dr. Boyce, you're all right, but he was back broadcasting today and last night. So he, he was on it. He was on it. But yeah, what what a 24 hours. Like I just went, mm-hmm. wow. Wow, wow, crazy, crazy. But we're back, and our phones are not cracked. Well, my screen is a crack, but I don't have a green screen of death. Um, but I have a protective cover. And yes, Dr. Boys, I'm glad you got your phone and you have a cover on it this time. Thank you very much. All right, so let's get to part two. Let's start off with Biden officials confront limits of federal response and exercise for preparing 2024 election threats. Chat it. I don't understand why this man has to fight this in the first place. This is just so ridiculous. Look at where we are. I mean, everything that he does, somebody's going to fight him over and they're going to they're going to try to make him seem he's incompetent. And 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 the, the fact that we're at this point in the first place, we just talked about how we as people can't talk to one another without feeling like someone could threaten us or or, um, you know, attack us or even, you know, with today's technology, anybody can say something on your your social media, they can go in and and do things to damage you. That the fact that we are here frightens me. I know that there's always been something like this in the past, but we're on a different level now. So the fact that he has to address this is pretty sad and it, it needs to be addressed because we're in an election year and we need to make sure that our elections are not compromised. And and this is our issue that it's been an issue for many, many years. So here we are now. And now people are finally admitting elections can be compromised and are being compromised on a different level. Yeah. And, and this dovetails with the other announcement that came out this week where you have um, states um, investing in uh, training and protocols for election workers they're tra- they're having to give they're giving them tourniquets now where you didn't have to have it before they're training them on active shooter drills and um that the impact that that's going to have we've gotten to i can't believe we've gotten to this point where voting in this country is dangerous not just physically in person but also everything leading up to it in the information that gets out there. Um, you have these, you have the social media companies minus X saying that they're going to do a better job on disinformation and misinformation Whatever. cycle. But you're talking about doing, you're talking about something that you're going to do. It's February, the elections in November. You should have been working on this back in 20 long time ago, 2020. You should have, Put, you should have worked on the technology and the reinforcements, tested it out in 2022 to have it ready to go in 2024. This doesn't, ma- this, this doesn't, it doesn't make sense that we've gotten to this point. It, it, and, it, and it happened in an eight year period. Yeah. The scariest part. In an eight year period, it happened that our complete, the, the foundation and everything that we thought was relatively safe about voting is totally undone. So in addition to worrying about voter disenfranchisement, um, voter suppression, we've got to worry about these out these outside threats from other, yeah. other places. And then we have to worry about threats from inside the house just going to cast your ballot. Yeah. And I'm already worried, period. I, you know, I'm registered in, in um, in Florida, I, I I don't trust the Florida system at all. I, I think it's extremely compromised and they're doing absolutely everything that they possibly can in Florida to not count your vote. Like now they're, they're seriously discussing not being able to do mail-in ballots. As much as I travel, 
I, I need my mail-in ballot. I, and even if I do get it this year, I'll question if it was even counted. Yeah. I, I, I got my state, thankfully, just um, increased the amount of time we have to vote. We have early voting now, which we didn't have. But I, I got to ask this question. Every state seems to have different election laws. Yeah, because states control elections. Right. Does that make sense? That's our quirkiness. That's what we do. States have their right to do what they need to do. Yeah. So 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 let me get the majority of elections because the majority of elections in the United States are not federal. So even with the upcoming presidential election, it's state laws. As to how as to how votes are cast, yes, because states fund. Does that, does that make sense? If the federal government was funding it, probably we would probably have more uniform laws that way. But the states fund their own elections. Interesting comment here by Yawa is natural, saying our issues are not going to matter soon. They're letting in the illegal immigrant immigrants. I believe the Native Americans have something to say. Hmm. So I just find like this, this whole election thing, this. <laughs> it's very, I mean, let you know, I'm, I'm with you, Dr. Five, um, mm-hmm. in the fact that it does seem hopeless, but I can't let myself go that way. I have to fight as an American. I, 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 I have a voice too. And my voice needs to be heard. And no matter how much we have to fight for it, I have to remember that my ancestors fought just this hard for their vote. If there was anything instilled in me and my family from the time I was a little girl, just mama taking me to the election polls, I will never not vote. I know that this country is is so screwed up right now. We are in such a mass tornado, tsunami, whatever you name it, apocalypse. But I will still, regardless of how I feel, believe that my vote at some level counts. Well, yeah, I mean, think of it. They like to think that the that the whole voting rights act thing was so long ago. When you put it in this context, it should tell you how important it is to us, is that um, every last Black person in this country has a relative living that was disenfranchised prior to the 1965 Voting Rights Act. Yes. If you have a relative that was born before then, particularly if you were in the South at that time. Yes. Okay. So it it doesn't, it doesn't make sense, but, but then again, what I want Texas laws telling us how we could choose our mayors in Connecticut. No, 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 because guess, because, because, how things operate in Texas and their issues in Texas are different than ours. But when it comes to the federal, uh, the federal elections, you would, they do have to, they do have to abide by federal, federal statutes, but how, um, what ID identifications and things that they will take, those are uniform across the state. Mm-hmm. So it, they're uniform across elections in, in, in that given state. So like my state, you know, it, they don't require a photo ID. Um, wow. They, they, wow. If, you, if, you read the, if you read the law, but in some of these other states are like, no, you have to have this ID. You have to have this. Some, some places are like, oh, you have to have an actual driver's license. Well, what yes. about people who don't drive? Right. And, and then the issues you are running into, particularly in some of these southern states, are older black people who didn't have um, birth certificates or the differences with, with name changes and things like that. Um, if your name is, if your name was spelled differently on your birth certificate versus yes. how it's spelled on all your, all of your other identification. Well, you had times like, for example, my mother, um, you know, spells her first name the way that she does, because when she went to, when she went to kindergarten, um, the teacher spelled it that way. But it's different on her birth certificate, and that was a challenge for her when she had to go get a um a passport. They were like, "Well, we need your school records." Um, my mother went to a segregated school in South Carolina when she was in kindergarten. Right. That they no longer exist. Do you know getting those records is impossible? Impossible. So 
you know, there was a whole process she had to go through. But that is what happens. That that is what happened in some of these places where they're requiring certain types of IDs. And then who is deciding what types of IDs are okay? You're right. And if what if you know someone at the polling thing and you don't have your ID, if you're of a privileged class, you might be able to escape and you'll get by. But what about the person who doesn't know that person? It, it, it has to be, a, it's not being applied um, uniformly. I, I think that is the, the problem. I think the ID issue is something that we should be able to federalize in, Agree. in the Voting Rights Act act it should be a part of that but they've gutted that act so much that right now they need to just worry about putting back the pieces that were stripped out of it right hashtag voter suppression well guess well guess what when they couldn't when they could no longer disenfranchise um black and brown people from the ballot the next that was voter suppression. That was that was what they put in to kind of circumvent yes. that. And, and we just haven't gone back. And so it, voter suppression, it's going to be looked at more scrupulously. Well, they're going to circumvent that with misinformation and disinformation, robocalls and AI. All right. Which we already know. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, a little small update on that. They have tracked it down to a Texas okay. company. A Texas company, a Texas company, a Texas company interfering mm -hmm. in a New Hampshire election. Okay, so uh -huh. the fire is inside the house, people. Mm -hmm. The bomb is inside the house. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, let's move on. This is Black History Month. We haven't spoken a lot about Black history in depth, but I think we're going to be starting to do that. Starting mm -hmm. with this, it's a recent story. Jacksonville, Florida woman tried to buy some Black History children's books at local Target. The books were listed as, quote, do not sell, unquote. And she was told it would be illegal for, the, for, for them to be sold. So the salesperson, well, okay, because yeah. it, it wasn't illegal. It yeah. wasn't, it's not illegal. The but you know, Go what's ahead. Just so funny is that my daughter and I actually saw those books a couple of weeks ago before they pulled them. They are in that section of when you first go into Target, they're in that section yeah. where they have like the three and five dollar things, the, the real exp inexpensive things. Target also has a Black History Month um, merchandise section of the store yes. further down um, where they have gotten where they've curated um, products to sell from black creators. Right. So I went and looked at the publisher who published these items of these books and magnets and things, and they're not black owned, but they are a book publisher. They publish books, Blue's Clues books. They publish books that go to schools. Here's what I don't understand. Oh, what, editor, what editor did you not put this through? And why do you not have a black editor who could look at that and say, hey, I mean, Carter G. Woodson, um, W.E.B. Du Bois, I get it. The drawings look very similar, but come on, come on. Come See, on. I th but okay, we we missed the major part. We understand, like, what we forgot to say is they screwed up. The, all the information was wrong. This is why they couldn't sell them and had to pull them. Right. So for one, they did clickbait on this a little bit, mm -hmm. try to make you angry, right. and two, they didn't address the fact that. The people who published it didn't even check it. How did it get to the stores? How did it get printed? How did it get approved? Yes. There you go. And you know, the even the worst part about it is that Target has taken the hit. Target also issued an apology. Yes. The publisher has not. Every media outlet that's covered this story, even NPR covered this story and attempted to reach the publisher. And, and they the won't ask. They did not, they did not respond. And I mean, personally, I feel like the bare minimum you should do is say, hey, we screwed up. But we screwed up. But see, they're an education publisher. And so that is um, why they are not saying anything. But you, you really should. And I, I looked into the publisher. I couldn't find any information about who owns them. 
So I'm even more curious about that part of it. To I know that they're not black owned, but I want to know who owns them, where they where they are located. Because I'm gonna have a yeah. well, I'm gonna really laugh if they're located in Florida. Right. <laughs> right. Well, and then I also have to say, I I'm a Target person. I love Target. And I love that the fact that they do these wonderful month things, not just for Black History Month, but for many other months that are celebrated. I have purchased a lot of their stuff. And I, I like the fact that they put this out. And I also like the fact that they put things out that were designed by our own community. So the fact that Target did come out and say to me, we are sorry, says something about them okay now like like i'm a not i at least appreciate them coming out and saying something but i'm with aisha who's behind this where did it come from and who let it slip without saying a word are you really that dumb i to write, waste I all editors. that money i write i have editors i've had bad editors let things slip and, and go by i bought books from people where there are there are um errors i'm i'm i've written a children's book myself and I'm, I'm working on getting it out i had it edited okay by two people okay it, that's the bare minimum that you need yes. to do it, and it's not just editing the fact that you got the people wrong 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 all the way wrong <laughs> All, all the, the way, way wrong. All the way wrong. You mean tell me the only people you got right were Barack Obama and Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King and every other person you got wrong? And and not only that, but I, I think that that employee should, um, somebody needs to speak to that employee who works for Target because to say that it is illegal yeah. Um, yeah. When, they are not, when they are not a lawyer or an expert on the law, one, and two, no, it wasn't illegal for him to tell it would have been punishable to you as an employee to sell something that was marked right to not sell but it's not illegal to sell it because if it was if it was illegal and there was something wrong with that target first of all targets legal would have come out not their pr people come out with the um statement the book publisher would have had their legal department come out and say That's something right. instead of being radio silent. So that part alone is just the egregious part for me is that him saying it was illegal. And I, I think that, I don't even think that, I think that the story would have just been that there was this mistake, not this part of it. Right. When he told the woman it was illegal, oh, the story came out. She went right to the press. She sure did. But then also I have to question that too, Aisha. <laughs> Let me tell you why I question the employee, because sometimes people are just not smart like that. You know what I mean? Like there is a level of they, you know, they're just trying to say something and that person just really didn't understand the difference. <laughs> and I don't know. I can't claim to know that. But some I need I, I would need a little backstory on that employee as well. I don't think that employee has employee a job anymore <laughs> because. Because by saying that it was illegal for them to sell them, that woman could have sued them for discrimination. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Now, that person doesn't have a job at Target anymore. This whole thing is just too much for me. I can't even believe that this even got to this point. <laughs> I, I hate this. Look, Target has some good things. And I'm not trying to say anything about the Black creators who have made some really nice merchandise that they have in there for Black History Month. But you yes. know what? Even better reason, support your local black bookstore. Yes. Please do. Yeah, that's a good point. You, well, can buy them, you can visit them online. There's a great one in New Orleans that we saw last year. There's tons of them all around. Support your local black bookstore. Because not only not only will you find the, the books, um, will you find good books, you'll find books that you won't even think about and about people that you would never think about this. Yes. And, and I understand the woman that was buying this was buying them for um, her classroom and another one for her church. Um, and and it this tells you a whole lot about the publisher yeah. in, in the first place is that they didn't even look, they sold, they were selling the books really cheap too. They're really inexpensive. Yeah. And so basically it was kind of a case of you're paying for, you get what you pay for. Yeah. Paying much. And so guess what? They didn't spend much in trying to do any editing. I have a feeling that they were just trying to get them out as quickly as possible, as massive as possible, because they got this contract with Target to do these books yep. for Black History Month and they wanted to make a killing. And they knew they could. Mm-hmm. All 
right? Well, nothing surprises me anymore. So that did, that didn't surprise me. That those the more you know, the less, the less you more the, the right. more I know, the more I know, the less I understand. That's my one of my go to lines. The more I know, the less I understand. Now, the more I know, I don't know a lot about this subject harry pace and black swan records so this is lala's alley today go for it it is this is one of the best stories i have heard in a long time and i i came across this story actually a few years ago and uh it's fascinated me ever since it was a podcast and it was about um harry pace who was the founder of black swan records and he was a very light complected man and he actually was insur in insurance and did all sorts of things before he had gotten into music publishing with another partner at that time sheet music was really big you know it was like when you know cds and all that stuff when we came up with everybody depended on that so him and his partner had a very thriving business with sheet music and then they had the opportunity to create records what they found was that most of the white companies were making a killing off of the black-faced artists and none of the black artists were actually being served and none of the black music market was being served. And so they decided to get into the record business and they struggled for a while, just like everybody does when you first get into, but they were the only black record company at the time. And they struggled for a very long time until they signed Ethel Waters. Ethel Waters decided to come to their company. They get through a lot of money behind her. She was a huge part of them being a very big success. And when they tapped into that market and the black market started to buy from them constantly, they started thriving. And at that time, that's when the white record companies came after them and decided they wanted to buy them out because they saw that it was going to be a massive uh, income thing for them. And Pace decided that he was not going to sell. So they continued to put on these concerts. They continued to put out this wonderful music for our communities. Um, and then unfortunately, as technology moves on, like we all know, um, the broadcast radio came out because we're talking like 1921 here, guys. Mm -hmm. This is not like anything recent. So when that happened, uh, music became such a big thing that people could hear every day that no one was going to buy sheet music and no one was going to buy records anymore when they could hear it on the radio. So he started struggling with the fact that, you know, he was competing again against broadcast radio. And then not only that, he at that time also take started taking in other artists as well um, in of different colors. So he also started bringing on white artists to help bring in money for that. But by then the technology had just taken over and he was really struggling. Now during this time when he was being threatened and, and trying to be pushed out by the white companies, they actually had put bombs around his company to get rid of them. They did not um, succeed in putting him out of business. But after the broadcast thing happening of the radio and he just couldn't get things done and then Ethel had to move on with a lot of her career, um, he decided to get out of the business and then he decided to get into insurance. And he also then became an attorney. But here's what's interesting. He just disappeared from the records. After all of that happened, no one really knew what happened to Harry Pace. In the 1940 census, it shows that he had registered himself as white. Mm -hmm. And so no one really knew his history because he never talked about it. He never shared it and he kept it to himself. So much so that his family, his children and his grandchildren thought that they thought that he was Italian. They had no clue. So when these things came out and these are recent findings that the parents of the grandchildren brought all the grandchildren in and said, we have some news to tell you. Um, we're black. 
<laughs> and some of them wow. were like, what? And then some were like really embraceive about it. And like, they just was like, well, we want to know our history. So because they started really researching their history, it is coming to, it's coming to fruition of a few, a big story with several podcasts. I highly recommend that you go to the NPR uh, uh, website where they have the story about it and then look up the podcast, The Strange Case of Harry Pace. This is absolutely a wonderful story, but it's also a good story in the way that we could see how we can thrive and uplift one another. Guys, he wasn't just a regular person. He was really, really, really involved with W.D. Du Bois, and he also helped him build his record company. So as you can see, it goes full circle on how we support one another in our in our um, communities. So this is a very fascinating story and a wonderful Black history for you to research this month. I'm glad you brought that up. Because, Yo, um, well, man, it's, that's it's, like it's a Lala segment. Yeah, I was actually looking at I was actually looking at that history. It, it's funny that you brought that up for us to talk about because I um, was thinking, how, what am I what am I going to do after I publish this children's book? What's the next thing I'm going to work on? So I have started collecting the histories of every um, record label in this country founded by or co-founded by Black people, and there are a lot of them. <laughs> there are yes. a lot of them and the people behind them and trying to find all of these stories. And I've so far I have, there's more than a hundred um, that I have, that I've been able to trace um, and, and not just like, some of them are like major um, labels that we know of. And then some of them are like yes. even minor ones and, and just, you know, different people, different artists that you didn't know who had their own labels. Like Bob Marley had his own. Yes. Label course and so just going you know going through those different um those different histories and the histories behind them and the people behind them and how they got into fascinating them, all the stories are pretty much the same because they could not get representation on other record labels or other record labels would not market them properly um and, and so it, it's really interesting history. I'm going to have to go and check out that podcast. Um, oh, it's wonderful. It's like a six piece series. Yeah. It's like a six piece series. And it goes and from his one early is history. Mm -hmm. And Black Swan is considered the first Black owned record label. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to, I'm thinking, is there a future of a La La segment here? Or just, I just wondering, <laughs> it was so well read and you just delivered it so outstanding was very, very, very well done. Actually, ironic, uh, on one of the other platforms that I host, uh, The Morning Five, I earlier on this week, I had a gentleman on who's uh, the executive director of the Canadian Black Music Archives. Wow. So there's a lot of relationship between Black American artists and Black Canadian artists. Yeah. Because yeah, a, of, of a lot of Black American artists didn't want to go into the war, so they came up here to right. Canada. That's so right. The draft, but there was so yeah. I had him on earlier this week, and a lot of fascinating stories and yeah. people you never heard of before. And for were, the longest brought. time, he was the only black-owned record label. Yes, um, I've been finding wow. in my research until until the '30s, like the mid '30s. Wow. So okay. you know, and then they were they were very sparse between that 1920s period to the um to the 50s. I mean, you get this uh -huh. boom of them, not even in the 60s, you get this boom of them, like mostly in the late 70s and the 80s. The uh -huh. 80s had right. so many. It's not, yes. it's not funny. I mean, just so many, even just for single record releases. And so it's a very interesting history. All right. Yeah, well. it's really rich. So JG Marr says many stories like that in Black American community passing for white. Yes, and I'm I'm glad that you brought that up, JJ. I want to to discuss just a little bit. I know this is not on our agenda, but well, I've noticed no problem. Go for it. I've noticed a lot. Um, me being biracial, I've noticed a lot of people now coming out saying, "Are you know how dare they do that? You know, were they not proud of their history?" Well, you know what? You don't know 
what they went through and you weren't in their shoes. That was a very difficult choice. There were many people in our families that did do that, um, that passed. And it was very hard on them. And matter of fact, some of the parents encouraged them to because they needed a better life. And so what I'm seeing now is like a backlash for many of those who did choose to pass. And it saddens me because to me, that's infighting and arguing over something that, you know, you're trying to decide someone else's life. And we all know that there's a thing called the one drop rule. And um, if you look up my DNA, I am 83% Caucasian and I still consider myself a black woman. I choose to be, but never in my life will I ever banish or talk against someone who decided to pass for the better life. Um, I, I can't imagine what it would have been like to been in their shoes. I think we all just need to understand that that is a personal decision and and to take it into consideration before we say certain things. Now, I'm not saying that you are. I'm just saying that I've just noticed that there's an uptick of that type of comment and backlash in many of the groups that I'm in right now. Wow. Yeah, I, I think the thing, about, the thing about America that's so funny is that no one really knows what's in their family tree. You shake, you shake that tree all you want. Something's going to pop out that you weren't expecting period. It's the same way that Phyllis Dillard, Phyllis Dillard's father was, uh, was a white, a black man passing for white. And her, her mother told her that, that she, and she told her that because she didn't want her to be surprised if she decided to have children and she had a little brown child. So there are many stories that we don't know about, and I'll never condemn, I don't know that man's story of why he decided he wanted to pass. He was from Louisiana. That should tell you enough. Yeah. Um, on why he chose to go that way. And same thing with Dr. Channing too. This, this, she had the same, same history um, where she knew people just assumed and, and she let people assume. And, and the thing I think with, with this guy that's so interesting is that he didn't, in his business, he didn't, he didn't pass. Right. Until he got out of the, the high profile business, which it makes I, I you, you have to wonder why. And I think why that's, you know you wish there were journals or something to, to know what was it that made you decide to do that. Um, and that's what his family is actually digging into now. They want to know why. Right, and, and you got to remember too. A lot of those census things. Did did he say that in the census, or did someone else decide it for him? Because exactly. Didn't I tell y'all what happened to me down in Florida, right? I went to go get my license. I went with my husband, who was a beautiful caramel color man. I go down there and the lady, tell she didn't even ask me what I was. She said, okay, so you're Caucasian. I said, no, 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 no. I am black. And she was red in the face. She just assumed. Now, in that situation, if someone really didn't want to have to tell you, it would have been very easy for her to change that and not say anything at all. Yeah, you know, when I was in high school, I had these two friends. Um, they both had um, black mothers and white fathers. And one of the conversations, I overheard a conversation they were having because they, they were trying to figure out how on their birth certificate, now mind you, we were all born in the 70s. So at that time, doing the birth certificates, the nurses were looking at, were filling out a lot of the, the data and stuff. You know, the parents were filling out, giving them the information. But when it came, they would just check the race. And what one of them had has um, her rate had her race listed as white, and the other one had her race list, listed as black. When they looked the inverse, <laughs> so, and, and they were like, well, they were trying to figure out why it was. And the story that they found out was that the, the people at the hospital looked at them as babies or saw the or the father was the one giving the information. That's what it was. The father, the fathers were the ones giving the information. So they just assumed. Assumed. Yeah. One of the most dangerous words in the world. Assumed. Assumed. All right. Yeah. Well, ladies, that's another epic conversation down. Um, gentlemen, I haven't heard from, well, and I saw a message from you, 
the nobody asked me guys show melvin lars have not heard from you in a minute definitely we have to touch base offline so good to good to hear from you uh jg mars true actress carol carol yeah. channing yeah yes and yeah. uh says yes greetings my brother i've missed our conversation they will be rekindled i will make a point of that so as always the ladies were on fire today yes we're in conversations and again we only touch a little bit there's so much more but before we get to close it off as always they'll get to share now here is the host of a new upcoming new segment lala <laughs> lala life how can people get a hold of you you can find me at Living the Lala on all social media platforms because I'm kind of addicted that way. All right. And then we've got the staggers. Yeah, you can try and find me on Instagram. Most Mostly find Discord. me on Discord. Don't join the <laughs> Discord. I'm there all the time. All right. Good stuff. All right. And for myself, there's where you can get a hold of me, the D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W.com, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, The Dr. Vibe Show. Instagram at The Dr. Vibe Show and X-D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W. So a few things before we call it a day. And I didn't get a chance to put it in all the popcorns because the conversation was so engaging. Primetime Saturday show store. There's the link. Patreon. There's the link. <laughs> Discord. This is the email address. Dr. Period. V i b e at the dr. V i b e s h o w dot com. As always, please subscribe to the Doctor Vibe Show on YouTube and hit the notification button. Also, follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. And also to advertise your business, product, or service on any of the platforms that I host, please feel free to email me. Dr. Period. V i b e at the dr. V i b e s h o w dot com. So, if you want to catch replays of this epic conversation, again, Doctor Vibe, Doctor Vibe Show, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and also the website the dr. V i b e s h o w dot com. I want to say thanks to everyone who caught this live or on the replay. Thank you. Jen Myers, uh, love the conversation always, but we love you as always. And the Nobody Action Guy shows fire for the conversation. Well, hope you won't be a stranger, my brother. All right? Hope you won't be a stranger as always. Live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get smaller to get stronger. Block assumptions, the name bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect. Remember to give yourself grace and don't just manage your time. Manage your energy. And remember, next week, special guest Manifa Brooks is going to be talking about data privacy. Lock it in, 7 p.m. Eastern time, a week from today, if you're watching this live. Or let me put it official, Saturday, February 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. If you have questions about data privacy, this is my go-to person right now in the world. God bless. Peace to all. Keep the faith and walk good.